Richard Feynman called it the single experiment containing the whole of the mystery of quantum mechanics, the double slit experiment, where an individual particle of light or matter appears to do the impossible, the experiment that undeniably established wave-particle duality, now central to quantum mechanics, as an unavoidable fact of nature. But to understand the double slit experiment, we first need to build up two knowledge frameworks, wave interference and probability. We'll start with waves. As we watch the ocean waves ebb and flow, we see small ripples on the water. When two sets of ripples are traveling in different directions and they overlap, perhaps one reflected off some rocks, we can see wave interference. Where both ripples are high, they make a high point, and where both are low, they make a low point. We call this constructive interference. The waves are working together, adding up positively or negatively. But where one ripple is high and one is low, they cancel out, and we call the interference destructive. And just like the tides aren't just high and low, waves do everything in between, constructive and destructive interference. When a water droplet falls in a pool, it creates ripples that spread out in a circle. It's like the water droplet has plucked the surface of the water like a guitar string, sending vibrations throughout the calm water. Now, similarly, when a ripple encounters a single narrow slit, the water on the other side acts like it's been plucked at the side of the slit and a circular ripple emanates from the slit. Now, what do you think what will happen if we replace this single slit with two slits? On your handout, there's a space for you to predict what will happen. Pause the video and write down a prediction now. When a ripple passes through a double slit, we observe lines of constructive and destructive interference. Calculating where these lines of constructive and destructive interference occurs requires knowing how to calculate whether the ripples that pass through each slit are in phase or out of phase. When two ripples are interfering constructively, that is, they're both up or down, we call them in phase. When two ripples are interfering destructively, where they cancel out, we say they're out of phase. Understanding phase is the main goal of your handout. If you'd like to play more with this faucet demo, you can find the link here. Now, before you go on to your homework, you might be wondering, what does all this have to do with quantum mechanics? Well, let's imagine a situation where a classical particle, like a billiard ball, is going to go through a slit in a wall. If we know exactly where the billiard ball starts, then we know exactly where the billiard ball is going to end up on the other side. Now, let's say we only know roughly where the billiard ball is. Then instead of pinpointing where it's starting, we can assign a probability distribution, often a bell curve centered on where we think the ball is most likely to be. The curve only goes from 0 to 1, because we can't be less probable than 0%, or more probable than 100% likely. And the area underneath the curve has to add up to 100%, because we know the ball will be found somewhere. Now, when we let this billiard ball go through a slit and ask where it is, our uncertainty about where it is initially turns into an uncertainty about where it's going to be finally. If we add a second slit, our uncertainty about the initial position of the billiard ball combines with the uncertainty about which slit it will go through to give us a two-humped final probability distribution over final positions. Now, if we replaced our billiard ball with a quantum particle, 
What do you expect to see? Pause the video here and make a prediction. This is a real experiment where a quantum particle, here a photon, is going through a double slit. Each of these points represents a spot where a photon has been detected. As we add a second slit, slit for a quantum particle, like a photon of light or an electron or even a whole atom, we observe something very interesting happen. There are regions where we never see the particles. The only way to explain this is through destructive interference. But even though we think there is something like a probability wave that is waving, probability can't be negative. So it can't be probability that's destructively interfering with itself. Something else must be going on. There are many theories about what it is that's waving, from a possibility wave, to parallel universes, to states of knowledge, to physical waves of particles on them too. More on this in the weeks to come. But for now, we're going to learn how to predict the pattern we see from the quantum double slit experiment. Like the double slit experiment with water droplets, we see regions of constructive and destructive interference, which correspond to when two waves have been re-plucked from the two slits are in phase or out of phase. But what is phase? And how do we determine it? Phase means what it sounds like. What phase of the wave's oscillation is it in? The key feature of waves is that they wave, going up and down repeatedly. The distance it takes for a wave to go back to where it starts in the cycle is the wavelength, and here is the distance between the two red dots. One way to determine phase was famously figured out by Dutch physicist Christian Huygens. Once you know the wavelength, measure the length of the path between the source of a wave and where you're interested in the phase. Every time a wave goes through a wavelength, it comes back to the same part of its cycle, and the phase comes back to where it started. For this reason, we can think of phase as a number on a clock that's being rolled along the ground. And if we can figure out how long the path is, we can figure out what part of the phase it is at that point. If two waves have the same phase at a point, that is, their number on the clock is pointing in the same direction, we add them together and they interfere constructively. If they have the opposite phase, say 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, we subtract them and they interfere destructively. If you want to know how they interact when they differ by 90 degrees, which is partially constructive, partially destructive, see this optional math exploration of imaginary numbers. The idea of using path length to measure phase isn't so crazy. <clears throat> In fact, the ancient Greeks, Romans, and Chinese did the exact opposite process, using phase to measure length. Famously, Archimedes' odometer measured distance by dropping a ball each time a wheel went around, and counting the number of balls dropped. The precision of this method is what allowed later the Romans to make milestones so consistently spaced on the roads, leading to their later military conquests, at least in part. For your homework, you'll be using the method of uh, path length calculation to calculate the phase along several paths. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.